Okay, and welcome back to Fast Ship Performance. Um, this is the website. If you haven't been here for a while, it's uh, worth going to. We talk about performance and we talk about flying. And today we have um, a low-level take. My name is Tim Davies. I am a flying instructor in the Royal Air Force and on the Hawk T2 out of RF Valley on 4 Squadron. And today I'm in uh, Hawk T2, uh, as you can see there, with a friend of mine, Steve. He's in the front seat and Steve is on some training that he's doing for himself called Staff Continuation Training. And I've come along to uh, basically film in the back seat here and give you guys a bit of an education in the engaging with the public about the Royal Air Force. This is a moving map. This is what we're going to be using for our sortie today to keep us um, out of trouble. Primarily, we also have paper map copies in the cockpit, which tell us uh, where all the avoids are, and we'll be using those throughout the sortie as well to make sure that we're going to stay away from all these sensitive areas at low level. Okay, so we are, I've got a map in front of me here that I actually had from the sortie, and we're actually uh, over the North RSC. We are pretty much uh, about 10 miles west of Blackpool northbound this time and we're in the scent pretty much on about five to six thousand feet if i remember correctly our little bit of entry point then is um just south of windermere in a town called olverston uh, at this time then in the scent the reason i left this part in is that we're looking at the weather primarily and we're also um looking at the wind what that's doing we're talking about traffic there's a lot to get done uh, as we enter low level so uh, we are taking our time about it and that's the way to fly safe is about planning ahead uh, we're both calling height checks in the descent uh, we always do that, but we do it primarily, uh, well, we do it mainly as well when we're over the sea. And the checks we're going through now in this airplane, there are a lot of checks we have to go through. And because there's two people in the airplane, we are verbalizing them in the cockpit. Uh, what Steve we're doing now is um, getting rid of air traffic from uh, Blackpool, um, I believe he's holding at this time, or Wharton, and going en route. And when he goes en route, then he's going to select uh, what's stud 26 for us, which is the low level frequency. And we'll be putting out blind calls on that. Um, that some people will hear and some people won't, but either way, when we go around, we'll be telling other users of the low level environment, which is below 2,000 feet in the UK, uh, of our position and where our intended track is to help deconflict us from other aircraft. Uh, the checks we go through here are called the smart checks. So we're looking at the Squawk, which is our IFF, Identification Friend and Foe, and Steve will be setting 7001, which is what we wear. Um, we are also making sure that our HUD is in MAG for this sortie. Um, that our altimetry is set, and although we're descending to low level now on a what's called a regional pressure setting, which will be in the head-up display, we'll also um, be setting the rad out or the radar or the radio altimeter to uh, 250 feet or 225 feet, 10 percent lower than we are going to fly. We're going to fly at 250 feet as a minimum. That is a minimum, not a target. And the 225 is the where the warner is set. So if we do go below our uh, 250, which we shouldn't do, but if we do, yeah, we'll get a um, a rad out want to sound and we'll be pulling up um, what are we on T is for a TCAS so make sure that is on we do use that at low level it's not actually designed for low level but it is a useful aid for us as well and then we're gonna make sure our lights are anti coals to white which give us the, um, the bright flashes that people might help see us with those done we're also gonna walk uh, this is Olverston here that we're coming in now 1,000 feet for the coastline because uh, that's where the birds live because the best deconfliction from uh, hitting one of them and now we'll gradually as we move away from the water descend um, back over the land down about 250 feet. Uh, we're at 420 knots, which is seven miles a minute. That's about 90% RPM in this airplane, and we have acceleration markers in help display to help us achieve that. Uh, we are looking out, we're looking at the weather, and we are looking towards uh, where we're going to make sure that we have the visibility, and we do have the visibility today, to um, fly this sortie. I'm in the back seat, Steve's in the front, and uh, we are approaching Lake Windermere, looking at the uh, map now. So Steve would coming down Windermere, again, he's getting himself settled at low level. He would have also gone through uh, a set of checks called his uh, Swordillers, which uh, are pretty much weapons checks um, or fencing checks, which just makes sure we've got things such as the correct weapon package selected, um, the weapons which are in the right place, and some other bits and bobs to make sure we're ready to fight the airplane. So here we are in Lake Windermere now, town of Windermere, coming up pretty soon on the right hand side and from what I remember about the saucy we're both discussing the weather ahead because we've got to go to Keswick uh, pretty much and then up flowing up into Scotland towards the Moffat Valley which we're gonna have a look at later um, and then over to the west of Scotland so the weather is a slight concern for us the visibility is good and it is only a thin layer as well so we can um, pull up and go through it I believe that's Windermere the town of Windermere on the right hand side there wave to all the boats hello boats um, and then we're going to move up from uh, Amble, Amble Sides, where we're heading to. And we will flow across to uh, Thurlmere, I believe, before moving up towards uh, Keswick. 
So again, the things we're thinking about at low level here, as I said, the avoids are very important to us. And we do have light winds today, so we are um, concerned about um, paraglider activity, uh, which is a big uh, concern for us. And that uh, normally happens, um, it's actually marked on the map, but it does normally happen on light wind days, very light wind days, in fact. And it tends to happen on um, the, the side of hills, pretty much, that are protected from the wind, or the winds coming into that side of hill, sorry, and those are, the, those are the ones they leap off. So we know some of those hills are up here as we come through Thurmill. So or Thurl, Thurl Mere. So we are keeping eyes out for those. And regularly we do fly underneath um, paragliders, so we have to make sure we're fully aware. What else are we doing at low level now? So obviously fuel is a major concern to us. We burn down here around about 25 kilograms per minute of fuel. Um, obviously other aircraft burn a lot more, but we're only small, we're only light, we're only Hawk T2. So again, we're doing a lot of fuel checks. We're talking about the next waypoint. In fact, we're heading towards on the map here, waypoint five, but it's not joined up with a straight line. Um, the straight line will take us across the mountains to the left. We're using the valleys here um, to stay low, obviously, is what we do. And Steve tries to visually judge the 250 feet MSD and then use the radar altimeter and the head up display to back that up. Um, I think on the water up here in a minute, we see as we come up past Keswick, we can see our own um, reflection because it is so calm, the wind is so light, so there isn't any movement on the surface. And again, this can be a very difficult time for a jet pilot or any pilot over very calm, flat, reflective water very easy to send down into that and before you know it you find yourself um, bouncing off the surface in a very ungraceful manner lots of aeroplane being spread all over the countryside right so here we're looking to the left looking for these paragliders we don't see any on this source you don't believe there were any there today as i said it is a school day after all and um, they're probably all at work keswick then is going to be on the right hand side as we come out of this and again we're going to head over to the west slightly Okay, and now we're going to transition this video across to uh, Scotland, uh, pretty much. We've coasted out and we have dropped into the Moffat Valley, uh, which is going to... Here's the map right now. So um, this is going to take us down the Moffat. Um, this lake here, if I just quickly jump from my map to Scotland, I can tell you what it is. Again, you've got to be very careful here because it's very easy to um, fly into very, very flat water. This um, lake at the bottom of the valley, in the middle one now, is called... It's just coming up now for me. Uh, St Mary's Lock, that's the one. Uh, we're flowing down there really and again and making sure that we are flowing the valley as it is intended. And we think we come out of Star Wars here and then actually turn right and moff it up the A74. Again, thinking about fuel, thinking about weather as you move across to the west of Scotland. It all happens quite quickly, so you need to have the, uh, the look ahead, the next look technique uh, squared away really. So we know now we have a climb option, which means that if we do get in trouble at low level for a bird or anything, uh, we can easily come out, we're not going to go IMC, we've got nice layers there. Coming down to the Star Wars end, following this road all the way to the Moffat, Steve using 250 MSD all around the aircraft. So it's not just the height above the ground, it's also the height above the valley walls. Again, maintaining uh, 7 miles a minute um, at low level, which is 420 knots, 450 knots for a very small period if we're on an attack run. Okay, looking ahead then, Moffat is going to come out on the right-hand side. So the weather itself is looking very benign which is nice. Uh, the fuel's burning away, it's all quite good and at this stage. We've probably used about half the fuel for the sortie, so from about 1600, we're probably down about 800 kilograms of fuel and we're going to need to land back at Valley with about 200 kilograms. So we're constantly doing some maths to work out um, whether we can make that. And from the planning, of course, we know we can. If we start avoiding the weather, then that starts to um, eat into our fuel plan it takes a lot of mental calculation so at this point according to the map to get home from here from pulling up with no restrictions on airspace and we are under some airspace at the moment from Presswick zone and that airspace is at 5,500 feet if it wasn't there and we could climb through it uh, unrestricted then we'd need about 500 kilograms according to the map to get home and that would be at a height of 31,000 feet as it's about 140 miles away at the moment is valley okay Tony right now all turns in the Hawker at 4G at low level and that really is just tensing that arm there, getting that blood, uh, tensing the legs, um, getting the blood out of the legs, back into the upper torso and the brain to stop yourself uh, becoming unconscious. Here's the A74. You've got power lines running down the right-hand side. I think on the map you might have a train line. Yes, you do, running down the left-hand side. And Steve's going to follow this road all the way up until he gets to some wind farms. And he is looking for these, obviously, and he has got a map that he can refer to, but the, the kit, the moving map for him is telling him where his next waypoint is. It gives him a range to the next waypoint and also gives him a steering carrot in the head-up display so he knows exactly where he's going. He's talking to me front to back now about his hopes and dreams. No, he's not. He's talking about the weather. Uh, he's talking about the fuel. He's talking about his plan for any target run that we're going to be on. 
And if he was on an evasion sortie right now, then he would obviously be looking out behind his wingman, which is um, the Steve's lookout sector today. If he had a wingman, which he doesn't, uh, and making sure that the hostile aircraft is not intending to come down and shoot that guy in the six. Lookout is very important, especially for trucks. Luckily, we missed that one. Um, and uh, we, we are constantly scanning around the back of the airplane to make sure that um, we are not conflicting with any other aircraft. The aircraft we see at low level, the Typhoons, Tornadoes, uh, F-15s, uh, are other ones as well, and Lake and Heath. So we're making sure that we uh, are conflicting with those. Okay, I think it's the left-hand turn now. I've got this right. It's going to come round onto a heading of uh, 208 on the map here. And so looking out into the turn, 4G round is going to roll out with check the dead wing. Make sure that's clear. Good look out to the right-hand side. Good. Okay, flowing across then to the west of Scotland. Presswick zone now is probably about 30 miles out to the right-hand side. And if you had a bird strike from this height, we can probably zoom climb to about nine or 10,000 feet just with the energy that we have. So a bird strike that stopped the engine on a catastrophic, catastrophic uncontained failure um, lots of fire, that sort of thing. We could, as long as it went out, we could actually glide this aircraft probably about twice the height that we'd attained. So we know now, really, if we did have an engine failure, we probably haven't got much of a hope of going anywhere. Um, so we'd just uh, literally pull up uh, to 30 degrees nose up, or as required, leave the throttle where it was, we hit a bird, and then we just have a look at what the engine was doing. It's got um, full authority digital engine control on this engine, which is FADEC, it's called, and it will attempt to right relight itself, which is very generous of it. Uh, but it should allow us uh, to get ourselves pretty much up to about nine or 10,000 feet. And again, that's going to give us about 20 mile gliding range. As we progress further west, then Presswick will be a priority for us. Um, and that should allow us, yeah, as we progress over, it might allow us into a forced landing into Presswick, which is, which is quite a dynamic procedure in the Hawkers, I'm sure you can imagine. Now look at the clouds there. The weather is opening up. So any profiles that we had, which would be loft profiles, so the Payway 4, which takes us up to about 3,000 feet, would be um, available for us today, including a strafe profile, if we can do that, that again is a climbing profile. Okay, so pressing over to the west then, uh, where are we? Here we are again. Right now then, we are uh, yeah, just about south of Presswick by about 15 miles, so now we're starting to look into the territory where we could actually fly a PFL if we needed to, and we'll be talking about that here. Again, if we did pull up, we'd be pulling straight up into controlled airspace for Presswick Zone, and we'd be scoring emergency immediately. And uh, with Victor Mike, we'll just make sure we avoid the airliners if that happened. Either way, we'll be putting ourselves in a position uh, back at 190 knots to glide the aircraft into Presswick, um, hopefully to uh, get it on the deck there, because these aircraft are quite expensive. Don't necessarily want to drop them in a field. Steve's going to progress over to the west end, and he's going to come uh, right, and he's going to start a climb uh, relatively soon. And that climb is going to take us out. So what he's going to, out of the low-level environment, so what he's going to start talking about now is his plan for this. And he will be saying to me, right, I'm going to climb out. We're going to have this much fuel. I'm going to speak to Scottish on Stud 9. I'm let him know where we are. He's going to be near Newton, the town of Newton Stewart. So he'll say, I'm at Newton Stewart. So I'm a Hawk T2 climbing out, looking for a radar service, um, a traffic service for an RTB Valley. And the, the aircraft uh, climbs, we climb the aircraft to twice the range, really, for our bingo recovery with some little kind of public maths we do which isn't the most complicated but it does allow us to work out what our fuel burn is going to be so here we pretty much know we're going to be about 100 miles north of the valley and um, the kit will tell us that we are north of the Isle of Man when we pull out and we will actually be flying over the Isle of Man so it's pretty good if we were to have an issue with fuel which we don't uh, the Isle of Man would be somewhere that we could dip into for fuel but that's not something that happens on a regular occurrence because we would have planned what fuel we need to have when we reach uh, our low level exit point in this case it is going to be let's have a look borough head um as i said i think it's about uh, i could do the maths it's about 100 miles i think north of of valley which uh, allows us to uh, work out the fuel that we require there's some danger areas as well that we have to avoid which are very important to us so we'll make sure we do avoid those and we will ask air traffic if uh, they are active as we climb out and if they are, then we will obviously steer ourselves around those danger areas. Okay, so it's only going to be a thin layer to climb up. We're happy to penetrate thin layers of cloud. We've got TCAS, so make sure we're clear above. So we are pretty much a victim of air forces. If we can, we like to fight not in cloud. No one likes fighting in clouds. So as we climb out, we were looking for a small gap in those clouds to be able to maintain um, victim mic or visual met conditions to remain outside off cloud as you can see there we are climbing up we're now going to be doing a lot of things in the aircraft we'll be undoing the checks we did on the way in so we'll be getting rid of the rad out in the hud we're resetting 
um, the Warner, so it doesn't go off when we land the aeroplane. We'll be uh, putting the latest regional pressure setting on. We'll be putting Stud 9 ready to go. We're not going to be able to pick up Scottish at this height. We're going to need to get about five, 6,000 feet for anyone is able to pick us up and then when we do call as I said we're asking for a traffic service and we'll be asking um, for a radar pickup to RTB Valley so I hope you got something out of this um, it's a narrated video obviously and I know it's 15 minutes of your life you're never going to get back but hopefully you've, you've picked something up useful if there's anything uh, you want to ask then Twitter is a great place for it and um, I'll drop that Twitter handle down at the bottom of this video and just by all means whack me a question um, or go to fastjetperformance.com and ask me there Tim Davies thanks so much